Hello. In the second episode of the Software Carpentry Lectures on Handling Directories and Files in Python, we'll take a look at Python's walk command, which explores a directory and builds a list of all the subdirectories, files, sub-subdirectories, indeed everything within that directory. Walk takes in a directory and returns a list of tuples. As walk uses recursion, and this can be a quite complex concept to understand if you've not encountered it before, we'll walk through how walk works, which may help us understand its output more easily. So, given this directory structure, walk would create a tuple with the path to the current directory, for example, dot. There would be a list of directories in the current directory, in this case A, B and C. As for list dir, the list of the directories is in no specific order. And there would be a list of the files in the current directory. In this case there are none, so the list is empty. Walk then recurses. That is to say, it calls itself using each directory in the current directory in turn. So, it calls itself on the first directory, which is C. In this case, the path to the directory is dot .c. C has no subdirectories, so the directory list is empty. And C has one file, c.txt. As C has no subdirectories, the call to walk on C exits. And we're back in the original call to walk. This now moves on to the next directory in the list, which is A. A has no directories and two files, a1.txt and a2.txt. A has no subdirectories, so the call to walk on A exits. And again, we're back in the original call to walk. This now moves on to the next directory in the list, which is B. B has one file, b.txt and two directories, P and Q. The subdirectories of B are then walked in turn. So, starting with P, P has one file and no directories. As P has no directories, we return up a level and move on to the next directory of B's, which is Q, which has no directories and two files. As Q has no directories, we return up to B. As we're done with both P and Q, we're finished with B, and so we return to our original directory. And as we've now done A, B and C, we're finished. So, here's how we'd call walk in our code. We now know that walk returns a list of tuples, so let's save them in a variable. We know that each tuple consists of a directory path, a list of subdirectories in that directory, and a list of files. So, we can use a for in loop to print each tuple in the list in turn. And here is the result. Remember, each tuple contains a directory, the list of subdirectories in each directory. If there are none, then this is an empty list. And each tuple also contains the list of files in each directory. Again, an empty list if there are none. For each directory, the directory name given to walk is used as a prefix. In this case, the dot. So, if we use walk with getcwd to get the current working directory and print the results, we can see that the current working directory is the prefix. Walk supports an optional top-down argument, which, by default, is true. If we set this to false, then tuples from child directories appear before their parents in the list. P and Q's tuples appear before that of their parent, B. And A, B and C's tuples appear in the list before those of the original directory. To summarise, in this episode, we saw how the walk function allows us to recursively explore a directory's contents and gather a complete list of all the directories and files beneath it. 
Thank you for listening.